You have your data, but don't know how to start writing the paper. Staring at a blank screen, feeling overwhelmed. I'm going to guide you on how to outline your research paper quickly. I have a bonus tip at the end, so be sure to stick around. This is Dr. Jia from Publish MD here to guide clinicians publish papers and achieve their academic goals. Creating an outline will help break the anxiety by putting something down on paper. And remember, writing creates clarity. I will briefly introduce the structure of a typical medical research paper. The reviewers and readers have a certain expectation on what goes where. So if you do not follow the structure, you will confuse the readers and you actually will lose credibility. For research papers in the health sciences, they pretty much follow the IMRAD structure, which is the introduction, methods, results and analysis, and discussion. The introduction. The introduction is to define the research gap, the research problem, what has been done so far, and how your research is here to answer that problem. It is not a literature review where you are going through the overview of the research field. As a convention, there are typically three paragraphs in the introduction section. In paragraph one, you introduce a broad problem. Why is it important? What has been done before? Then in paragraph two, you are doing the same, but you're narrowing what has been done, what is the deeper problem, and why more research has to be done. In paragraph three, you describe the specific problem and describe your research aims. Next is the method section. This is where you describe what you did, how you did it, and justify why you chose certain things. I find this the easiest part because if you have written your research protocol, you can copy what you have written in the research protocol into the method section. Just remember to change it to past tense. These are the subsections you want to make sure you include in the method section. The sample. Where did you recruit your patients or subjects? What's the setting? And how did you collect that information or data? The study design specifically describe whether it's a cross-sectional study, a cohort study, a randomized controlled trial. Next is the definition. Here is where you describe the different outcomes, the different covariates and exposures or intervention. How do you justify why you chose certain variables? Next, measurement. This is how you measure certain variable. For example, how did you check a blood pressure? Did you check a blood pressure using a 24 hour blood pressure machine? Or was it a clinic blood pressure reading? Next, the statistical analysis. This is where you describe the different tests you use for the descriptive part of the analysis and then the inferential statistics. This is where you describe your odds ratio, hazard ratio, etc. Then the additional tests to prove that you have thought through the limitation and to reduce bias. Tests to make sure your paper is more robust. For example, sensitivity analysis. How do you handle missing data? Be sure to include which statistical software you use to analyze your results. Then finally, a statement about approval from the ethics committee or the institutional review board. Next is the results section. The goal of the results section is to report on your study findings. Usually at the beginning, you describe how did you arrive at your sample. And then you describe your sample or the subjects, the number of patients, the percentage or the proportion, the averages. If you have several groups, describe how one group is different from the other. Then when it comes to the inferential data, you report on what is the most important, the primary outcome first, then followed by the secondary outcome. At the end, only the ad hoc analyses or sensitivity analyses. The discussion section. Here it is where you are discussing about your research finding in the context of the research field. Research is never done in a vacuum. The discussion section is where you show how your research findings fits into the research gap and how your research finding can move or shift your research view forward. Also, this is where you show the implication and the application of your research finding. In paragraph one, summarize why you have done the study and how you have done this study, and then followed by listing out the results. I'm gonna show you an example. We conducted X study for Y patients with the aim to find Z. Next, just summarize the key findings, keep it to two to three of the most important findings. The middle paragraphs are where you're discussing your study findings. Keep to only one key finding in each paragraph. So how do you discuss? you compare your finding with what has been found in the research field. Is your key finding similar to other research? If so, how is your data adding to the literature? 
Is your research finding conflicting with what others have found? If so, why? Do you have a hypothesis? Perhaps you use a different method or had a smaller sample size. Then comes the limitations and strengths paragraph. There are no research studies that do not have limitation. That's because we have finite resources and finite time. When you list on your limitations, don't just end there. Think about how your study is still contributing to science or what did you do to minimize the limitation. As for the strength, you can talk about whether your research is the first, the biggest, using the best method. Then for conclusion, write one sentence summarizing the main finding and future directions. I know conducting a research project is an overwhelming process. So I've made an idea to paper blueprint for you. This blueprint walks you through a seven step process that goes from the idea generation phase to the paper submission phase. Be sure to get a copy by clicking on the link down in the description below. Now, which one do you write first? Just because the paper is presented in the sequence does not mean that you have to write it in that order. In fact, I like to start writing the method section first. That's because, as I mentioned earlier, in a research protocol, you would have written methods already. Next, you write the results. Finally, you can write the introduction or discussion section. Some people like to write the introduction first because they are clear about the research question, but oftentimes after the results come out, the story would have changed or shifted a little. And because of that, I personally prefer to write the discussion first, followed by the introduction section. Also, after having written the results and discussion section, I would have gone through the process of thinking through the arguments and looking at my research in the context of the research field. And by then I would have crafted a better story in my mind. And also I would have thought through the implication and the application of the research study. These are important elements that I want to include in the introduction section in order to hook the readers. Are there any academic writing struggles you have? Please leave a comment below to let me know what other topics you would like me to cover. I would love to hear from you. Now that you have an outline, I recommend that you watch a video on the mistakes you should avoid when writing a research paper. See you in the next video.